Hello everyone. In this season of Advent, we read and meditate on the biblical passages that exhort us to prepare for both the celebration of Christ's birth in Bethlehem and his return in glory at the end of time as the judge of all. Last Sunday, from the Gospel of Matthew, we read that just before the end of his ministry on earth, Jesus predicted his second coming. Jesus said that just like God had destroyed the wicked in a flood, but let the righteous Noah and few others live and inherit the earth, he would come again in judgment, and at that time he would take away the wicked, but allow the righteous to become dwellers of his kingdom. However, he urged his people to be vigilant, alert, and constantly watchful, just like the master who had kept a careful watch at night, anticipating the possibility of a thief breaking into his house, implying that he would come suddenly and unexpectedly like a thief. Friends, in today's Gospel text, we read of the work of John the Baptist who paved the way for Jesus' public ministry. John appeared in the desert of Judea and called on people to repent, for the kingdom of heaven was near. Matthew, in fact, reminds us that the prophet Isaiah had prophesied the preaching of John 700 years before Christ. Isaiah, who lived at the time of wickedness, war, and turmoil in Israel's history, prophesied the destruction of Israel because of their sin and rebellion against God, and then delivered a message of hope that their liberation would come from Jesus, the Messiah. He had also foretold that a voice in the wilderness would cry out to prepare the way of the Lord and make straight his paths. Friends, now you can imagine the reaction of the Jews when they heard John preaching a message of repentance. The Jews knew the Old Testament prophecies well, and they were expecting a political messiah who would re-establish David's throne in Israel and usher in an era of great prosperity and peace. So on hearing the preaching of John about the messiah, many from Jerusalem, Judea and all around the area of the river Jordan came to him. He baptized those who confessed their sins but refused to baptize others, including some of the Pharisees and Sadducees. John said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Friends, why did John call the Pharisees and Sadducees a brood of vipers? The Pharisees and Sadducees were two prominent Jewish religious groups in Jesus' day. There were many differences between them, but they were quite similar in their attitude and behavior. Both the groups came across as being very religious and superior to others. They imagined that they would be exempted from God's wrath on the grounds of their being the children of Abraham. Many times in the past, they had failed to live up to their obligations according to the covenant with God and so were sent into exile for their sins. They were descendants of Abraham just by birth, not by faith and righteousness. In John the Baptist and Jesus' time, many of the Jews had the same attitude. In this context, John called them a brood of vipers, perhaps referring to them as the seeds of the serpent, that is, Satan's offspring or children of the devil. Friends, John went on to demand that they repent and produce good fruit as evidence of repentance. That is, their repentance must affect the way they lived. Then he said to them, God can raise up children of Abraham from these stones. Friends, these words can be understood in two ways. One. 
if all the descendants of Abraham perished because say their sin and God would have no seed of Abraham left on earth to continue with his covenant he who created Adam from the dust of the earth and Isaac for Abraham from the dead womb of Sarah he can also transform the stones which lay before them into children of Abraham and they can through their faith and obedience inherit the promises made to Abraham 2 the stones refer to the hard-hearted and estranged gentiles or unbelievers among and of whom god would be able to raise spiritual children for abraham friends john's point was that it was not just good enough to be born into the chosen race abraham's family but one must also follow in the footsteps of the obedient faith of abraham and repent of sin and change one's life if they refuse to repent and bear good fruit john warned that they would be thrown into the fire as a punishment john also cautioned them that the messiah would be more powerful and mightier than him and that he would baptize them with the holy spirit and fire after saying this john used an analogy and said that the messiah would not only gather his wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn in unquenchable fire this means that at his second coming christ will allow repentant converts into his kingdom but will destroy the unrepentant people with fire friends in today's text john is revealing some powerful lessons for us one All of us are capable of knowing right from wrong and the way we should live. We know sin exists and what it is like. We also know that sin not only has an effect upon us, it also affects our relationship with other people. Yet we often deliberately do what we know is sin. If someone confronts us about our sin, we attempt to justify ourselves. friends self justification is one of the biggest problems many of us face today we justify our sinful actions by saying there are others who are far worse than me the world is like that god does not see sin in his children and so on friends as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of christ We have another opportunity to heed the call of John the Baptist for repentance and be saved. As long as any sin, whether big or small, whether overt or covert, reigns in our lives, we cannot experience God's total love. As long as we bear the guilt of sin, we cannot protest that God is unjust in allowing us to suffer. Let us therefore listen as john urges to prepare for the coming of the lord by truly and humbly confessing our sins 2 just like the jews who expected salvation on account of their being descendants of abraham many people boast of their descent from god fearing parents christian upbringing and heritage and demand big blessings from god even though they do not tread their parents steps they are beguiled by thoughts that god's grace automatically descends from parents to children friends it is a great blessing to have parents who fear love and honor god however children should not expect their parents piety to bring about their own salvation or it will come to us as a matter of course even though salvation of entire christian household may be accomplished through the faith and devotion of your parent every individual in the household must personally believe in jesus christ and fear love honor and obey god so to god fearing parents should not presume on the promises of god in order for children to inherit god's promises for provision direction protection wisdom peace and anything they need for life parents besides praying 
must also exert every effort to educate their children the ways of God. Amen. God bless you.